Now, you may be asking yourself, why are we formalizing classical observables into quantum mechanical operators? It's because we get to learn the value of the observable by applying the corresponding operator to the wave function. In mathematics, a frequent problem is one of eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. The first example on this slide simply illustrates that if I have an operator q hat and I apply it to an eigenfunction g of x, then I will get back the eigenfunction times the eigenvalue, which in this case is denoted as beta. The second example demonstrates this a little more concretely. Assume that we have an operator d hat to the power of n, which is defined as differentiating what follows n times. If I apply that operator to f of x being equal to e to the power of alpha x, then we would get back e to the alpha x times alpha to the power of n. So we would say that f of x is an eigenfunction of this operator and that alpha to the power of n is its eigenvalue. Bringing this back to our discussion of quantum mechanics, wave functions are eigenfunctions of operators and the classical observables are the eigenvalues. This brings us to our third postulate. In any measurement of the observable associated with the operator a hat, the only values that will ever be observed are the eigenvalues a, which satisfy the eigenvalue equation a hat times psi is equal to a times psi. Let's apply this to a quantum mechanics specific example. On the first line, the Schrodinger equation has been written out where psi has been factored out on the left hand side. All the terms in the brackets, being the minus h bar squared over 2m times d squared by dx squared plus u, represents an operator we just defined, the Hamiltonian. We can replace all that with h hat, and we are left with h hat times psi is equal to e times psi. Therefore, the Schrodinger equation can be formulated as an eigenvalue eigenfunction problem, where if we were to apply the Hamiltonian to a wave function, we will get back the total energy and the wave function. The momentum of quantum mechanical systems is an important quantity to measure. Let's now use the Hamiltonian to deduce the momentum operator. Since the Hamiltonian is an operator whose classical observable is the total energy of the system, then we can think of the two terms added together as the kinetic and potential energy summed together. This is illustrated by the fact that if there is no potential energy, u of x being equal to zero, then we are left with only the kinetic energy. For this next part, we can always generalize to the three spatial coordinates. However, for this discussion, we will only use the x coordinate. We define the kinetic energy operator as k hat is equal to negative h bar squared over 2m d squared by dx squared. Classically, the kinetic energy of a system can be written as being equal to the momentum squared or p squared over 2m. We can conclude that p hat in the x direction squared is equal to negative h bar squared d squared by dx squared. We can then factor that to get the momentum operator p hat in the x direction being equal to negative i h bar times d by dx. Now let's take this deduced momentum operator which is the momentum operator in one dimension and let's apply it to a solution for our wave function for psi. So again here is our momentum operator negative i h bar times d by dx and we're going to apply that to the solution to the Schrodinger equation. And so e to the i k x, this is one of the solutions to the, the Schrodinger equation for the particle in the box, among many other problems. And so all we're going to do is we're just going to then just take p x and apply that directly to, in this case I've denoted it as f of x. And if I write both those things explicitly, and I would say negative i h bar d by dx, I'm going to multiply or to the right hand side of that I'm going to write e to the i kx. And so the first thing that we have to do is we have to do this differential. We have to do this part, this operation. And basically it's just saying take the derivative of e to the i kx. So I'll write negative i h bar to start off with. Well the derivative of e to the i kx, I just get an i k and I get the function returned back to me. And so again, here is these two pieces where we have applied our operator and that you can start to see that, yes, I'm getting back the function itself, the e to the i kx. 
In this part in front, I have all these other pieces, which I'm going to now multiply together. I have a K, and I have an H bar, so I'll just move those out front, and I have negative I times I. Negative I times I, well, that's just 1. And then I have E to the I KX. So finally, my last step is just to say KH bar is equal to E to the I, or KH bar times E to the I KX. And so if we're just trying to find the eigenvalue, then that's just this part out front. And the reason why is that it's this other part, this e to the i kx, this is the eigenfunction being the solution to the Schrodinger equation. So when I applied my quantum mechanical operator, my momentum operator, to my eigenfunction, then I ended up getting an eigenvalue times the eigenfunction. And so what this says is that the momentum in the x direction, as defined by this wave function, that I'm going to be applying my operator onto, well, my momentum would be observed to be k times h bar. That would be the observable quantity that I would observe the momentum be for this solution to the wave function.